Welcome, welcome to another episode of Step of the Flatbush Don TV, where we don't glorify the streets, but instead we learn from them. The wise learn from the mistakes of others. The fool makes the same mistakes over and over again, expecting a different result. We all make bad choices, but the greatest among us use the lessons learned to help others avoid the pitfalls of the streets. Death style, where gold, opiates, and diamonds become their god. I am Stepha, your host. Peace, love, development, and unity is our code. Four pillars. Without it, we're lost. Today's topic is the gully men. Now, the gully men, a crew, a Jamaican crew from Brooklyn who originated from McGregor Gully, that's where they got their name from, was under leadership of Eric Chinaman, Chinaman Vassal. Eric Chinaman Vassal. On December 8, 1990, federal agents raided a ruthless Jamaican drug trafficking crew who operated in Brooklyn, Dallas, and Dallas, Texas, and beyond, who were linked to at least 10 murders. On, on, on their best day, they made 60,000 in profits from heroin and crack. 365 days a week, uh, a year operation running 24 hours a day. Federal agents said the gully men used rental cars to move coke from New York to Texas. Filling the returning cars with dozens of illegal handguns and weapons. The crew wired hundreds of thousands of dollars in profits through Western Union. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. That's a red flag. You know how many people got knocked off doing that? Money laundering. Western Union is a no-no. Back then, putting 10,000, over 10,000 in the bank was a no-no. There's certain thresholds that these companies and organizations have to report back to the feds. They have to sign uh, notifications, fill out notifications that this person deposited this money on this day, and then the feds start investigations on you. So those is no-nos. Western Union, That's like shooting yourself in the foot. They said the government used beatings, torches, and murder as tools of discipline. Like I said before, when you have organizations, you try to keep people in line. You're already doing wrong, and you gotta keep on doing wrong. These things that you do, is going to come and haunt you later. James M. Fox, Assistant Director, FBI, New York office, said Vassal treated his people so brutally, so cruelly, that some of them turned on him. Yeah, that might be the case. But they flipped. Word on the street was that some of the people he brought down as enforcers got greedy. They tried to flip the script on him. They killed one of his top enforcers so that they could clear, get a clear shot at him and take over his organization. So when he got wind of that, 
he struck back and took one of the brothers out. Now when one of the brothers got hit, which is the, supposed to be the most vicious one, the other one ran to the FBI and talked, told everything he knew. I'm not going to call no names, but that was what was the word on the street at the time. Now I was in the feds with a lot of these dudes. And it's like everybody cut deals for themselves. Anyway, federal agents seized 22 buildings, including the gang headquarters on 1367 Sterling Place near Schenectady Avenue in Crown Heights, seizing 15 guns, 150 in cash, and six buildings. Charges range from drug trafficking, money laundering, participation, and 10 murders. Vassal using a dummy corporation in the early 80s. After ordering the murder of the owner, took over the building. So you have a boss who was really business minded. This person was using dummy corporations. <laughs> so he had some knowledge of business. The gang used drug profits to buy lavish houses in Uniondale and Hempstead, Long Island. The gang was said to import more than 400 guns since 1987 to 1990. Vassal ordered the murder of Cedric Miller because he belonged to the, the Jamaican Labor Party, but the victim survived the attack. Another strike against him. Vassal would send guns and money back to Jamaica in back of TV sets for his People's National Party in Jamaica, the political party he belonged to. Government is PNP, so they belong to the People's National Party. Guns he called vote getters. Government at that time. Gullyman was in close proximity to Uzi Delroy and they had skirmishes over territory. So when Uzi Delroy was convicted in 1989, guess what? The Gullyman was next on the list, right? When Uzi went down, the spotlight shift from Uzi to the gully man. So now you got this brother that Chinaman, he was a knowledgeable person, individual, that had a business sense, soft-spoken brother. Operated his business on the back of a sports club. As I said, when you're doing or having a legal business, there's such certain methods that come with the business. When you rule with an iron fist, then you have to, there's certain things that come with that. The beatings, the tortures, the murders come with that. And that's where you lose. Because with murders, that's when they want to put you away. Because they saying that you're a menace to society. 
You're killing people out here. You're a threat to the public. Once you're a threat to the public, because you don't crossed over to monster status, then you have to be removed from the street. That gives them the license to hunt you down and tuck you in to some penitentiary for a whole lot of years. You send it thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to Western Union. That's a no-no. Sending guns across state lines. That's a no-no. Try to kill somebody and they survive. Dudes try to form a coup against you. Body start dropping. Dudes are scared for their life. They're going to go cut deals. They're going to seek shelter with the feds because the feds is the only one they feel that could, that could protect them from your wrath. So all that you built, all your hard work, that you put in because of the things that you did while you was building those same things was used to destroy how ironic how ironic like I said before the players are different Players are different, but the game is the same. When I was in the feds, you know how many people paperwork I read that fell to money laundering through Western Union? How many dudes is putting, tucking money into the bank the boss was aware of them tucking money to the bank, instructed them not to put over $10,000 at one time, but because dudes was lazy, they put more than nine five at that time, and that alerted the teller to put in a notification to the feds about the about deposits and the feds started an investigation on that crew. The crew is only as strong as the weakest link. So when you form these organizations, you look towards the weakest person in your organization and know that that person will bring you down. And it might not be that one, but a weak individual or unknowledgeable individual or undisciplined individual will bring you down. So you playing it, in essence, you're playing a game that you cannot win. And that's insanity. But a lot of people was not gonna come to grips with that. Why? Because they're blinded by the fact that there's money to be made. I could come up in this game. I could become a millionaire. I could buy the fly cars, the jewelry from Tito's or whatever. I could wear the Versace and the Fendi. Or whatever designer you choose. Because that, that money becomes your God. It becomes your all in all. And you're willing to do anything for it 
including selling your soul. And when I say selling your soul, I'm not talking about no spooky shit. I'm not talking about when you sell your soul, it means that it's not no sign, no contract with no devil. I don't believe in no devil. Devils is real. They walk around on two feet. Devil is a mentality. So when I say you sell your soul to the devil, I'm saying that all your mor morality that you learned growing up, the value system that your parents taught you is out the window. Anything goes. For that dollar, you knock off your best friend or whatever you have to do to stack that money. Anybody get in the way, they're expendable in your eyes. That's what I'm talking about, selling your soul. You do things you would never normally do in the sane and conscious mind because you're motiva motivated by a profit margin. You're motivated by money or the things that money can buy. You're motivated by power. And it's a false sense of power. Because when the feds swoop down on you, all that power is out the window. So you're not as powerful as you thought you was. So I say, wise up today. Wise up or be willing to face the consequences that you know is coming. You look back to the line, Nikki Barnes, Frank Matthews, you look down the line, all these brothers that had leadership skills or whatever formed these organizations. Everybody fell. Yes, they made a lot of money. Yes, they had power. Yes, they had the women. Yes, they had the cars. Yes, they had the houses. At one point, do you feel your life is worth? That's what you got to ask yourself. How much is your life worth? How much is your freedom worth? Because when you go behind the wall, they're going to tell you when to get up. They're going to tell you when to eat. You become a slave by way of the 13th Amendment. So you got to ask yourself, is that what you want for yourself? Because that's what comes with the gangster life. That's what comes with the bad boy life. A lot of people that serve in life in prison today, that's in those maxi maxes that have no contact, can't even read their mail. They got to look on the screen and read their mail. They don't have no human contact. They can't even see other prisoners. They're in a concrete cell where everything comes to you. You don't even see natural sunlight. So now you grow old in jail. You don't see your grandkids. Forget about your lady, because she's somebody else's lady. All that money you had, somebody else, she's spending that with somebody else. And whoever else was holding it, when you fell, they spending it. They done came up off of you.
And what they didn't spend, your lawyer done ate, ate that up. Commissary eating that up. Restitution, because you got to pay that fine. The feds might put, who knows, $100,000 restitution, maybe half a million restitution. So everything you get in your account, they take their PC. They take their cut. That goes towards the restitution. Think today. We got to be wise today. Their same business skills that you might have, man, do something legit with it. Like I said, these brothers was wise enough to put organizations together. So why not use those, that skill set to build legitimate businesses? Don't just limit yourself to the drug game. Build legitimate businesses. Learn about Bitcoin. Learn different games. Don't be just one dimensional. All you know is the drug game. Be multi-dimensional. Put yourself around people that know things, that could teach you things so that you can elevate. And then once you elevate, you can help somebody else. Elevate. If you follow that path, I could tell you, if that path that you follow is illegal, you're just asking for the same thing that everybody else got. Them same people that tell you to hit so-and-so in the head or body this one or body that one, those are the same people that's going to come testify against you. Self-preservation is a mother. When some people is facing life or they facing 30, 40, 50 years, they're going to give you up before they go down, know that. All that tough Tony thing, that stuff they, they, they talking now, they could talk it. Yeah, some of them might be tough. But I'm telling you, when you go in front of that judge, that federal judge, and he start talking that big time, your legs start getting weak. You start thinking about, that's it. You're not coming out anymore. Even if they don't tell right then and there, sometimes 10 years into their sentence, they'll come back to the court, get in touch with the district attorney, the state's attorney, get in touch with him, and talk about, I know this and that, I know where the body's at. I know who killed this one and this one and this one and this one, and start cutting deals. I had a celly. Every night, this dude looking at his girl's pictures and talking about he miss her and this and that, this and that, this and that. He had got 30 years for having a machine gun. So now, he talking to one of the gully men who flipped. And they talking and dude is advising him how to get how to get in touch with the state's attorney so that he could go back down and get a time cut if he tell on somebody. And you know, I, I didn't like that. So every time they used to have their conversation, I said, listen, man, when dude come here to come check you, yo, y'all raise up out the cell, man. I don't even want y'all here talking about, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to hear that shit. Go take that man and y'all go someplace else with that, man. I don't even want to hear it. But that's the reality of it. That's the whole reality of the situation. Dudes crumble. If you don't want that for yourself, 
Don't get involved with what you can't handle. Because when the hammer come down, it's lights out. When the feds come for you, they already know what they need to know. Whoever done flip 